which local film has the tagline, this is not a love story? The Faithful and the Foul, The Princess and the Musician, Dead Billy, or Hook? I'm your host, Dirk Norris, president of the New Mexico Film Foundation. And uh, while Alex and Lauren take a little bit of a break to get some more popcorn, um, we're talking about old movies, new movies, and my guest today is um, John Broadhead, writer, director, producer of films here in New Mexico. Um, so my first question is, um, would you, we're kind of making this connection between what you're doing now and um, the older films that we're doing in the program. Uh, first question, uh, what do you think of black and white and would you shoot black and white? I know we don't have film anymore, right? Which right. Is, um, no, I think there's, the demise of there's some, great, um, some great films, modern films that have been shot in black and white for aesthetic purposes. Mm -hmm. I would do it in a heartbeat given the right subject matter. Right. Um, yeah. And, and what would that subject matter be? Well, noir, Love story, yeah. noir is, the, is the obvious, you know, thing that comes to mind, but right. I think I'd have to think about that. But it, it would be interesting to try something that hasn't really been done before in black and white. Uh, but I'd have to think about that. The, uh, one of the things I like about, about black and white is there's so much color in it. I mean, you get the gradation of, of um, the grays and everything, and there's nothing like seeing uh, My Girl Friday or something on a big screen um, in, in black and white. It just seems to really, really pop. It's a real different experience than you get from seeing color. Yeah, and the contrast uh, creates a much more stark, for some reason it stays with you more uh, in a way that, than color does because you're given such a black and uh, obvious, you know, black and white right. uh, depiction of what the characters are thinking and doing and the lighting then, it, you know, kind of s supplements that. John, um, that with your, um, as an independent filmmaker, um, are you influenced by um, these earlier uh, films and um, either by content or style? Um, I think the way that the old films uh, kind of inspire me as an independent filmmaker, and I think I kind of generally speak for a lot of independent filmmakers, is we grew up watching, watching the classics, and they stuck with us in a way that we, we kind of want to see still when we go to see a Hollywood film, but mm -hmm. for some reason or another we're losing we're losing that. Films don't stick with us like the old films did. Um, so I think what we want to do is recapture that magic that is kind of missing from studio films now for, some, for whatever reason. Right. Uh, and one of, the, one of the differences is the technology, um, where there was a guy going like this at one point and a lot of flickering, and now we have 80 frames per second where you don't get any flicker, and, um, and, and people kind of discuss the difference, and you know, are we losing something from 24 frames to 80 frames as a, a, an experience of watching film? I think so. I mean, as far as that, I'm definitely always going to be a proponent of 24, and just those kind of those trademark film images. You know, mm -hmm. this is cinema. This is what we see when we go to the movies, and this right. is... I, I feel like it feels like video games anymore, what with the, the newer 48 frames per second films that I won't, I won't mention the names of. But uh, <laughs> okay. I, think, I think a lot of the effort that went into films, the extra step, um, for, like the crank in the camera, right. the, the film, those, because film is such a finely tuned machine now, you're missing a lot of the effort which created a sort of love on the part of the filmmakers. And that's... I find that's still there a little bit with indie mm -hmm. productions because we still run around like crazy right. to make this thing happen, and you have to love what you're doing if you're gonna if you're gonna go through that much effort. And, and that's certainly something that exists here in the independent film industry in New Mexico is the passion. Um, I, I don't think um, absolutely right. You're you don't last very long if you don't have the passion for what you're doing. That's very true. Um, so uh, with these. Uh, uh, this experience of, of watching films. Some people say that theaters will go away because um, now you can watch it on your smartphone. And how do you feel about that? I hope not. Yeah. Because uh, as impressive as, as you know, watching on the small screen is, and and useful sometimes because if you don't have the time, for instance, you just want to watch something online. TV shows, for instance, is very it's very useful. But the film experience, I think, always has to be big, always has to be epic. You always have to be, have the ability to go see a film that was made for the big screen on the big screen. And there's no, there's no replacement for that. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, would you ever get to the point where um, in your filmmaking, part of a marketing scheme is, is um, something they didn't have back then? You know, there were, there were posters and, and newsreels and that sort of thing for your film, but there, there, weren't, uh, there wasn't the internet um, that you could promote yourself. Right. You couldn't um, do VOD or Netflix and that sort of thing. Um, is that something you're looking at as you move forward in your filmmaking? Well, of course, that's, that's one of the, the greatest sources of, of publicity for indie filmmakers because, because you know, the, the poster, the news clippings, th those are really limited, to, in large, by and large, to studio films still. Right. So what indie filmmakers have is, is the internet for publicity. And I think we're making pretty good use of that with each film that we create, making a, a, as big a buzz on the internet as we can. Right. Um, we've got to go because um, uh, Lauren and Alex has gotten their um, uh, their popcorn okay. and their sodas. And um, before we do, John, um, is there a website that people can go to? Um, uh, yeah. Contact information. www.reflectionfilmsllc.com, uh, and you can see some of our past work and news about our upcoming work as well. You've been watching um, in, <laughs> Indian Sights with um, John Broadhead, my guest this week. And uh, now we're going to go back to the film. Thanks for watching. And you're back here with us in our fake house with Michael Pettis and the Pulp Film Lab. And we're about to get back into some more detour. But first, uh, can, we, can you tell uh, the audience again where you might be able to find your stuff on the internet? Uh, yeah, uh, you could find uh, uh, about Big Mistake the Movie on uh, bigmistakemovie.com or on, find us on Facebook. Uh, and uh, that's most, mostly where we have our info. So. Who's us on Facebook? Uh, me and my producers and my team, uh, Sylvia Padilla, uh, Tranquilino Padilla, they're my executive producers. Uh, they helped me make the film, a lot of other great actors. Nice. And crew. <laughs> oh, such a kidder. You oh. kidder. Michael? Now you've done it. I saw the whole thing, too. You're not getting out of this CZ by a long shot. Oh. Which local film has the tagline, This is not a love story? The answer is C, Dead Billy. That was an accident. Hey, thanks for watching. This is uh, Pulp Film Lab. I'm Alex Knight. And uh, we watched Detour. It was a fun, it was about a man that got away with a crime. I hope you join us again next time. We'll be watching more awesome and awesomely bad films. Um, yeah. Thank you.